I'm not sure how many of you all remember this story, but if you've been following me for a while, you know that I covered this story extensively when it went down. But about a year ago, this UFO, this crazy looking object in the sky, came down and allegedly landed in a family's backyard in Las Vegas. Now at first, that sounds crazy. That sounds unbelievable. But I believe that this story turned out to be one of the most solid UFO stories that we've had in recent history. I mean, I feel like this is our modern day like Roswell type of incident, if you ask me. Because there were just so many, there was a lot of evidence to back up that something did happen there that night. There was a lot of weird stuff going on after these sightings. If you don't know about this story, I would encourage you to go back and watch all of the videos I made about this topic because it was insane, and the story played out for a couple of weeks. But the reason I feel like this story was so solid is because that night, cameras and ring doorbell cameras all around this area in Las Vegas captured this weird object, this like bright lighty object flying through the sky. Even a police body cam caught footage of it and you can hear the cops like, oh, what in the hell is that? You know, flying through the sky. And it just so happens that a few minutes later, after the cops see this thing flying through the sky, after they catch it on their own body cam footage, those same exact cops are called to a house not that far away. And in that house is a frantic family who claims something landed in their backyard. Now they have video of them kind of frantic and trying to show whatever is in the backyard. They claim it was some type of weird looking creature. I've watched the videos a thousand times. I don't see the creature in the videos. A lot of people try to zoom in on the grainy footage and make out, oh, here's an eyeball, here's a hand. I don't really see nothing there. But we know that this object was caught on all of these different cameras and it was last seen right around the area of this home where this family claims that something just bam, came right down in their backyard. Now the family of course had a story where there was one kid in the family that was doing all the talking. I thought his story sounded believable. I had no reason not to believe him. And there was, like I said, a lot of evidence on his side that would suggest that something weird was in the area that night. But the reason why I took this story so seriously was not because of the videos of this weird object. It wasn't because the firsthand account from this kid and this family who claims they saw this big, tall alien creature in their backyard. The reason why I took this story so seriously was because of the response to it. And the days after they claimed this thing landed in their backyard, and I mean, I got the body cam footage of the police talking to this family and everything. You can go back and watch those videos. And the days after, Someone or a group of people claiming to be detectives and law enforcement from the local police department came to their home and they set up cameras and other electronic devices around their home. And the family later learned that the people who came to their home and set that stuff up were not a part of local of the local police department at all. They were some type of unknown agency that literally took this story seriously enough that they came to this home and set up surveillance and God knows what, probably bugged the house, mic'd the house up so they can hear what the family was talking about. 
whoever, the powers that be, I don't even know who these people were, they took the situation very seriously. Now, the local police department winded up coming and um, having to come out and admit that, hey, that wasn't us. And the cameras and stuff eventually got taken down. But the family was complaining of, like, for a lack of better way to describe it, like the men in black. Think of it like that. There were people in suits and unmarked cars sitting on the side of their house. And all types of weird stuff started going on. I could talk about the story all day, but, you know, for the sake of trying to keep this video short, go ahead and watch my past videos on the subject. But the reason why I'm here to talk about this story, basically a year later, is because now the family has gained the courage to start speaking out a little bit about what they experienced and what they have been experiencing since then. You see, this family had stated that they were going to do interviews with the news and all of this stuff, but then they walked it back. It seemed as if they got really scared. There were threats coming in. Like I said, people were coming from all over the world just to come to their house to try to like break into their backyard and see the area where the aliens were supposedly seen. I mean, this became one of the biggest alien stories I've ever seen in my life, okay? Well, here we are about a year later. Now the family has gained the courage to, sp to start speaking out again. And they're claiming that all of this stuff is not over. That now they're experiencing like some supernatural stuff going on within their home and that there's still weird people popping up at their house every day. So before I go forward, I want to go ahead and roll this news clip so we can all have a better understanding of what is happening here because they're providing new information that we haven't heard. And like I said, there's claims now that there's like all this weird supernatural activity in the area and more specifically within this home. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this news clip and then I'll be right back with more thoughts. So what's interesting also, Alex, in the year, almost the year that has passed, is that something else has begun to happen, they say, now inside the home. And they're very um, afraid of what they have been, say, what they say that they have been witnessing inside their home. Can you describe what it is they're telling you? Yeah, and I think that's the reason why Angel has pivoted from calling what he saw that night an angel, uh, uh, an alien, ex instead now calling it a demon, because he feels like he's seeing so much paranormal activity and just strange, unexplainable things happening inside of his home. There was uh, two anecdotes, one in particular that we're about to show you that literally made the hairs on my arm stand up just because it is so freaky, so unexplainable. We have a segment of that port part of the conversation. You, you mentioned paranormal activity. What exactly did you see? Well, I was in the other room. My brother called me and there was an upside down cross and there was a Jesus statue in it. They ripped Jesus out of it, they threw him like, across the room and it was floating upside down. Are you saying For floating example. in the air? Yeah, like in the air, it was floating upside down. What did you do? I mean, did you go pick it up? Did you knock it down? Like, how... No, I didn't do nothing. I was just sitting there. I was crazy. I was like, what? But how did it come down? It's not still floating right now, is it? No, no, it came down. So we got closer to it and then just dropped. It fell to the ground. A crucifix yeah. floating in the air, upside down. The Jesus on the crucifix had been ripped off yeah. and it was floating. Yeah. And you can say definitively, without lies, that that is what you saw. Yes, yes. It's really good. That's what I saw. What do you believe that is? How, how could something like that happen? That's not physically possible in this world. And that's just one story of many stories of paranormal activity that's happened inside this house, according to Angel. Uh, he said that the family has had to take some really drastic measures to make themselves feel safe within their home. We're going to talk more about all of that paranormal activity tomorrow night on Banfield. And one last question about just what their house, um, you know, has become, because, you know, Typically, uh, people are, are, they are rabid about stuff like this, and people will come from all corners of not just the country, but the earth to visit places like this. Have they right. been inundated with, um, with, with tourists and looky-loos and people who are not maybe um, as, as kind as they should be when they arrive on the property? 
Yeah, you bet. I mean, as you mentioned, this story sparked global attention. So everybody started coming to this house to get a peek at the backyard, hoping to catch a sight of a UFO or an alien or a demon, whatever it was back there. And so that's the reason why you see so many no trespassing signs. If you just look in the distance, you see one on the window. There's one on the garage uh, on their front door. There's a no trespassing sign, also a concealed carry uh, sign that says that, uh, you know, we will protect our property. So in the end, this is caught a lot of attention and so much so that they're seeing around four or five cars almost each and every day people stopping by people even jumping over the fence uh, breaking into their home trying to do whatever they can to catch a glimpse so distressing alex capriello thank you i know we've got more reporting ahead so i appreciate the time that you've taken out there uh, all this time after the instance itself thank you you know it's funny i was just talking about this earlier in a prior video about how one of the dominant theories right now surrounding UFOs and aliens is that they're basically just demons or some type of spiritual creatures. And, you know, there's people out there that claim that they have sources within the government that have confirmed this. And they claim that the government is working directly with whatever these creatures are. Now, the kid's story about what transpired that night has not changed at all. He has stuck to his story. The stuff that we're hearing about now is stuff that has supposedly transpired since then. Now, I'll tell you right now, I fully 100% believe that something happened out there in that area that night. Just the timing of everything. And you could look at the timing on the ring doorbell cameras and the timing on the body cam footage from the police when this object is seen in the sky, it was just a couple of minutes later that this family is calling frantically about this bright UFO type object just falling in their backyard, right? So the timing and everything is, is lined up. So we know there was some type of unidentified object in the area that night, but did it really crash in their backyard? You know, who knows? But that's what they claim. And I often look at situations and I look at people who claim they've done this or they've seen this and you can tell that they kind of want attention and you can tell they want clout. They want something. This family, as far as I can tell, it's not like they've been out here trying to gain anything from this. When this story was playing out originally, like about a year ago, this family wanted everyone to leave them the hell alone to the point that they just refused to talk to anyone about it anymore. I feel like if they really wanted to financially gain or get attention from the story, they could have done so, but it, it doesn't seem like they really wanted that. I mean, at least at the time, they were really reluctant to talk to these people in the first place. And from what I've gathered, a lot of the members of the family, I don't even know if they speak English. So they're not out here trying to get their face all over the news and in the tabloids. They're not out here trying to write books about their experiences and all of this other stuff that we see a lot of these other people, you know, do when they so-called, you know, encounter a UFO. So if you think that this family's in it for financial gain, as far as I can tell, they're not. Now, what the, whatever this resurgence is of this story... That's something I find fascinating because this story went away. I thought we would never hear about it again, yet here we are all of this time later, and it seems as if they're starting to dig back into the story. And at the very least, the same member of the family is starting to speak out more. And I guess maybe it's because they're scared of what they're experiencing in their home, or maybe all of this stuff is made up. I mean, that's for you to decide. All I can tell you for a 100% fact is that there was an unidentified object in the area that night when they called the police. And I can tell you for a fact that in the days after that event, there was a lot of weird stuff going on, including government agencies coming in and setting up surveillance cameras and everything on this house. And then they were later taken down. But if you want all of that information, you'll have to go back and watch the prior videos I made about this topic. 
But for now, it looks like I'm going to be diving back into this story and diving into some of these new claims about what has been transpiring, you know, since then. So let me know your thoughts right now about all of this down in the comments below. If you're feeling generous and you want to donate to the channel, you can donate via Cash App or Super Thanks, or you can help the channel for free by subscribing and liking this video. But with all of that being said, I'll talk to you all soon in the next one.